Yet, Srimati Radharani and her friends become very pleased with one who worships her through these eight verses. She offers such a person devotional service to Krishna. Very pleased. So what should we do? We must offer our worship to Srimati Radharani through the eight verses. So Srimati Radharani will be very pleased and then we can very easily get devotion to Sri Krishna.
I explained how Radharani appeared <coughs> when Krishna appeared in this planet. Srimati Radharani is Krishna's eternal consort. So wherever Krishna goes, Srimati Radharani also goes with him. In different universes, Krishna plays his pastimes. Actually, there are innumerable universes and Krishna's pastimes are continuously going on in different universes. And Krishna's pastimes are also going on in the spiritual sky. And Krishna's pastimes are also going on in the hearts of pure devotees. In these three ways, Krishna's eternal pastimes go on. And wherever Krishna is, Srimati Radharani is also there. And Krishna came to this planet 5,000 years ago. Krishna appeared as the son of Nanda Maharaj and Maharaj Yashoda. And Krishna performed in Vrindavan various pastimes. Those pastimes of Krishna are classified as Omar Lila, Obarna Lila, and Koishon Lila. Omar Lila is up to, five, is up to the age of five, and from six to ten, it is. Komar, uh, Pogarga Lila, and then from 11 to 15, which is Krishna's eternal youthful form, uh, Krishna's age is eternally like that of a 15 year old boy. So when Krishna performs his Homa Lila, or his pastimes, in the Vrindavan, the earth planet, Krishna appears as the sun. Jashoda and of the Maharaj. Krishna is born and then Krishna grows. And every day, just like a human child, Krishna grows. And when he, when he grow, as he grows, uh, he performs his pastimes with the residents of Vrindavan, his eternal associates, in order to drown them in an ocean of ecstasy. The purpose of Krishna's performing pastimes is simply to give pleasure to his devotees. That is how Krishna derives his joy. Krishna derives his joy by giving pleasure to his devotees. Nanda Maharaj and Mother Jashoda wanted to have Krishna as their son. Treating Krishna as their son, they derive their joy. So Krishna plays the little baby. And then Krishna's friends want to have him as their eternal friend, as their most intimate friend. So Krishna appears as their friend. Krishna acts just like a friend to those cowards. And by acting as a little coward boy, as a friend of those coward boys, Krishna gives them pleasure and thus Krishna derives his pleasure. <coughs> then the gopis wanted simply to love Krishna. And Krishna fulfills their desires also by becoming their lover. So in this way, Krishna submerges his devotees in an ocean of ecstasy. So, <clears throat> although apparently Krishna's activities are like that of a human being, but we should always remember that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. Krishna acts like a human being as a coward boy, but that doesn't mean that Krishna becomes a human. 
Radha, we should always remember that very mercifully, Krishna has given us a form that is identical to his form. The difference is, our forms are made of matter, flesh and blood. Whereas Krishna's form is Satchidan and the Vigra. Krishna's form is absolutely spiritual. Krishna's form is eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. And not only Krishna's form is Satchidananda Vigraha. All the residents of Vrindavan or all the associates of Krishna in the spiritual sky also have a Satchidananda Vigraha, a form that is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. And Krishna appears on this planet, performs his pastimes in Vrindavan as a human being, as a human child. He takes birth as a human child. But that doesn't mean that Krishna becomes a human being. That doesn't mean that Krishna assumes a body made of matter. Krishna's form is always eternal, always full of knowledge, always full of bliss. Krishna's form is always spiritual. Just like on the, alt on the altar we see Krishna's form as the deity. Apparently those forms are made of metal or stone or wood or clay. But are they wood or metal or clay? No. Krishna in the altar is Satchidananda Vigra. And he manifested his, his form through those apparently material elements so that we can perceive him, so that we can see him. Imagine if Krishna's form did not manifest. If Krishna did not manifest his form in these, through these elements, could we ever see his transcendental form? Could we? No, never. That is why Krishna manifested him, so, so that we can see him. Otherwise it's impossible for us to see Krishna with our, mind, with our mundane senses. Can this material senses that we have developed now, can these senses perceive the spiritual form of the Supreme Personality of God? With these eyes can we see the spirit soul? With these eyes can we see the spiritual form of anybody? Huh? No. So how can we possibly see Krishna's transcendental form with his material eyes? Therefore, very mercifully, for our convenience, Krishna manifested himself in these forms, which are known as Krishna's Satchidananda Vika, Krishna's transcendental form. And Krishna's form Krishna's forms are always transcendent. And the devotees know that fully so well. Similarly, uh, when Krishna takes birth, devotees know that it is just his pastimes. Krishna is appearing in that way so that we can see him. And if we are fortunate, then we can participate in Krishna's pastimes. And by participating in this pastime, we can develop a loving relationship with Krishna. We can develop our loving relationship with Krishna. So that's it. That, that's why it is so important that we can always remember different pastimes that Krishna enacted. We can dwell in those pastimes. We can become absorbed
absorbed in those pastimes. And by becoming absorbed in those pastimes of Krishna, we can remember Krishna. We can recognize Krishna's transcendental position. We can remember how wonderful Krishna is. And thus we can develop an intense desire to develop our relationship with Krishna. And if we can develop our loving relationship with Krishna, then what happens? Then we can go back to Krishna Loka. We can go back to the spiritual sign and be with Krishna. So, Krishna has made this opportunity for us and now it is up to us to take advantage of this opportunity. And of all of Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's pastime to the temple of the Nirvana is most wonderful. And of all those pastimes, Krishna's Pastimes with Srimati Radharani is most wonderful. Now, who is Srimati Radharani? Is Krishna just an ordinary boy and Srimati Radharani an ordinary girl and they are having a love affair? No. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Srimati Radharani is his pleasure potential. The personification of Krishna's pleasure potency. And through this pleasure potency, Krishna derives all his joy. Just as it has been mentioned here, that she can fulfill all the desires of Krishna. And Srimati fulfills all the desires of Krishna. And in this way, she is the source of all of Krishna's joy. Whenever Krishna wants to enjoy, it is through Srimati Radharani that he does that. And Krishna's pastimes are with Srimati Radharani are very, very wonderful. All of Krishna's pastimes are very wonderful. That has been described as Iti Driksha Lila Bhir Ananda Kunde Shabhushan Divajanta Akha Payantra Iti Driksha Lila Bhir Ananda Kunde In this way, through his pastimes, in an ocean of ecstasy, he drowns his associates in the world. And not only those who participate in those pastimes experience this joy to an unlimited extent, but anyone has the opportunity to become drowned, become submerged in, in the ocean of ecstasy. Even by hearing those pastimes, we can get drowned, submerged in the ocean of ecstasy. Just remembering those pastimes, you can get submerged in the ocean of ecstasy. That is how wonderful Krishna's pastimes are. These pastimes give us the feelings or experiences of different mellows. Those mellows are Hasho or Bhut, Bhi, Rodha, Bhayana, Bhi Hasho, and Kodha. Hasho means laughter, fun. Krishna's pastimes sometimes are very funny. And when we get to hear about Krishna's funny pastimes, what happens? We laugh. So laughter, or the wonder, surprise. 
Sometimes Krishna acts in such a wonderful way that everyone becomes all the drunk. Now Krishna lift, lifted Govardhan here and kept it holding for seven days on his little finger of his left hand. And when one gets to hear about that, how does he feel? Oh, how wonderful it is! How Krishna did it! Can you imagine just a seven-year-old boy who just plays with the cowboy boys from the morning to night? And who is exceedingly naughty, <laughs> who makes uh, everyone's life miserable. <laughs> and that little boy, all of a sudden, just lifted the Govardhan hill in such a precarious condition. There was a devastating rain coming. It seemed that the rain was going to inundate the entire Vrindavan and wash it away. Krishna said, don't worry. All the residents of Vrindavan approach Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, look at the cloud. Look at this torrents of rain. Look at this thunder. It's going to destroy all of us. What are you going to do now? Krishna says, don't worry. <laughs> and he lifted, he just lifted Govardhan Hill and kept it holding. And as he lifted Govardhan Hill, Govardhan, huh, it, came, it created a cave. As he lifted the hill, he didn't he lift it just from the ground. He lifted uh, from the bottom of it. And so it created a big space on the ground. And Krishna said, you take shelter of and go underneath that mountain. I'm holding it like an umbrella. And when the residents of Vrindavan came over there, came near that uh, bottom of the hill, they found that there was a beautiful staircase leading at the bottom of that cave. And it was a huge hall and they uh, climbed down the stairs along with the, uh, along with the animals, domestic animals like cows and buffaloes and goats. And not only that, when they went there they found that that hall was very beautifully built. There were pillars made of made of marble and different stones and very uh, many precious gems were given to Bhayana, Vivatsha and Koruna. Hasha means laughter. Fun. Krishna's, Krishna's pastimes sometimes are very funny. And when we uh, get to hear about Krishna's funny pastimes, what happens? We laugh. So laughter, all good, wonder, surprise. Sometimes Krishna acts in such a wonderful way that everyone becomes all struck. Uh, Krishna lift, lifted Govardhan here and came to hold it for seven days little finger of his left hand. And when one gets to hear about that, how does he feel? Oh, how wonderful it is! How Krishna did it! Can you imagine just a seven-year-old boy who just plays with the cowboy boys from the morning to night? And who is exceedingly naughty, who makes uh, everyone's life miserable. <laughs> and that little boy, all of a sudden just lifted the Govardhan hill in such a precarious condition. There was a devastating rain coming. It seemed that the rain was going to inundate the entire Vrindavan and wash it away. Krishna said, don't worry. All the residents of Vrindavan approached Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, look at the cloud. Look at this torrents of rain. Look at this thunder. It's going to destroy all of us. What are you going to do now? Krishna said, don't worry. <laughs> and he lifted, he just lifted Govardhan Hill and kept it holding. And as he lifted Govardhan Hill, Govardhan, uh, it, came, it created a cave. As he lifted the hill, he didn't he lift it just from the ground. He lifted uh, from the bottom of it. And so it created a big space on the ground. And Krishna said, you take shelter of and go underneath that mountain. I'm holding it like an umbrella. 
And when the residents of Vrindavan came over there, came near that uh, bottom of the hill, they found that there was a beautiful staircase leading at the bottom of that uh, cave. And it was a huge hall, and they uh, climbed down the stairs along with the, uh, along with the animals, domestic animals like cows and buffaloes and bulls. And not only that, when they went there, they found that that hall was very beautifully built. Uh, there were pillars uh, made of made of marble, different stones, and very uh, many precious gems were giving out a light. Jai Shri Shri Gauri Thai Ki Jai Shri Mati Radharani Ki Gaur Primarani So, in this way, the residents of Vrindavan, when they went there, they found that such a wonderful arrangement has been made for all of them. And they saw that not only that that place is very beautiful, uh, beautifully decorated, uh, and the floor was beautifully polished marble and onyx, uh, and there were walls that were very beautifully made with polished stones like granite, and there were many beautiful jewels giving out the light. So it was not dark there. It was beautifully lit up with those chains. And then they saw that place, in that place there were many uh, various types of food stuffs and drinks. So this is how Krishna makes all kinds of arrangements for his devotee. So don't the devotee is not surprised oh, how Krishna did it. <laughs> so this is the wonderful pastimes of Krishna. These are the wonderful and sometimes Krishna acts in a very naughty way. Like Krishna steals the butter and breaks the pots, and feeds the monkeys, and then scatters the butter all over the room. And the gopis who saw whose house it was she came and found that Krishna created such a mess. So she went to complain to Srimati, uh, complain to Jashoda Mai. And Jashoda Mai was surprised to hear that, that Krishna did such a thing. And she tried to defend Krishna, but the gopi was very upset. So, okay, tomorrow I'll catch him and bring him to you. Then probably you'll be here. So next day, she was waiting for Krishna to come with his friend. And Krishna did come. And the, when the gopi was, Hiding behind the door, she saw that Krishna was. Krishna came there with his friends. Then Krishna climbed up on Balaram's back and started to lower the pots of yogurt and butter. And then, <coughs> when they got all these pots of butter from the so hanging from the rafters, then Krishna ate those butter. And Krishna asked his friends also to join the join in that butter party. <laughs> then all the friends were full. They became, when they became, could, couldn't eat anymore. Then Krishna fed the monkeys, the butter, called the monkeys, and come eat the butter. So they also ate the butter. And they also became full. So they, they could eat anymore. Even though Krishna offered it, he said, we had enough of it. <laughs> then Krishna says, see, this butter is so bad that even the monkeys don't want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that, uh, Krishna just broke those pots. <laughs> and then uh, Krishna uh, uh, pinched the sleeping child of that gopi. That's the child of the gopi was sleeping on the bed. 
So Krishna feeds the child and the child woke up crying. <laughs> and when the child woke up crying, then Krishna along with his friends ran out of the room. <laughs> and this gopi was just waiting. And she caught Krishna. And Krishna was about to run out. And <clears throat> said, now I caught you. So now I'm taking you to your mother. So Krishna started to cry. So please don't take me to your mother. Please. I'll never do that. I'll never come to your mother. <laughs> I promise. With a heavy heart, with her own son on her back, she started to walk back to her house. <laughs> then all of a sudden she heard the laughter of Krishna. She looked up and down. This is Krishna that she was carrying. So she said, Krishna, you are such a rascal. <laughs> you, you became my son when I took you to be your mother. Krishna said, I told you, let me go. I told you that I would never come and do all this mischief. I will completely let you be in peace all the time. But you wouldn't listen to me, so I had to do something to defend myself. <clears throat> so, and, and the gopi was very, very upset. She said, like, you see, you embarrass me so much. Not only once, twice. And the gopi said, at least this time, I became your son. Next time you catch me and take me to, to my mother, I will become your husband. <laughs> <laughs> so in this way, Krishna drowns the devotees in an ocean. <laughs> and Krishna is assisted by Jogamaya. <laughs> in this way, Krishna performs all kinds of pastimes. Nectar of Devotion describes one such pastimes. One day, Krishna went to Radharani's house. Radharani's house, you know, that Radharani was married to Abhimanyu this morning at his current. So one day Abhimanyu went to some far off place in some business. So when Abhimanyu went away, Krishna became Abhimanyu. Krishna assumed Abhimanyu's form and Krishna came to the house. So Abhimanyu's mother, what is the name of Abhimanyu's mother? Jatila. And what is the name of Abhimanyu's sister? Kutila. So they are actually, it is all well known that mother-in-laws and sisters-in-law are the troublemakers. <laughs> the mother in law always, of course, nowadays there is no joint family. But in India, it is a well known fact that mother in law is, and sister in law will cause problems for you. The mother in law will always find faults with you and chastise you, no matter how good you are, she will always prove to you that you are the worst possible girl in this world. And so, uh, in this way, Jatila and Kutila uh, create, rather, make a lot of uh, problems for Srimati And on top of that, they suspect that Radharani is having an affair uh, with Krishna. Yes. So naturally, they don't like it. So, but they couldn't catch Radharani red hand. They couldn't catch Radha and Krishna red handed. So that was the problem. They suspected. Many times they almost caught Krishna, but they couldn't still prove or catch Krishna. So, <clears throat> rather, uh, uh, Krishna assumed the form of Abhimanyu and went to the house of Abhimanyu to meet with Srimati He thought, okay, now Abhimanyu has gone away, so now Krishna can, Krishna can go and go to the house and Abhimanyu. And so Krishna came and then 
<laughs> and everywhere there were flutes because last night there was a shower of flute. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, in this way, uh, Krishna performs his most wonderful pastimes. But although uh, Radharani uh, is saved by Krishna in this way, time after time and time again, but <clears throat> she was feeling very, very bad because people call her anxious. Uh, and and often she used to shed tears. So one day, uh, sitting in the solitude of her room, she was shedding her tears. And Krishna could understand that. So Krishna uh, became very... Uh, Krishna decided to do something about it. So at that time, uh, Krishna was sitting, Krishna was lying on his mother's lap. Mother Jashoda was standing Krishna. And <clears throat> all of a sudden, Krishna fainted. And Mother Jashoda saw that there is no sign of life in Krishna's body. So she started to cry. Nanda Maharaj came out running. Said, What happened? Everybody came running. What happened? Mother Jashoda started to tell you what happened. And Krishna stopped breathing. He became unconscious. Maybe he was dead. So please go and get a doctor as soon as possible. So Nanda Maharaj immediately ran out. And fortunately, when he ran out of the house, he saw uh, one person who looked like a doctor was walking towards him. So he asked, are you a doctor? He said, yes, I'm a very good doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I can even bring back a dead man. I can even make a dead man. So, Nanda Maharaj said, See, my son died all of a sudden. He became unconscious. So please come to my house and kill him. He said, Don't worry. I will make him alive. <laughs> <laughs> so, who is this doctor? Jai Shushi Radha Maharaj Mohan Ki. Jai Jai. Jai Shushi Radha Jai. Ki. Shumati Radha Rani Ki. Jai. Radha Shri Mohan Ki. Jai. 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 So, so the doctor came and said, don't worry, I will treat your son and he will become all right. So he came and the doctor came and treated, the, treated Krishna. Now who is this doctor? This doctor also is Krishna. <laughs> Krishna he, he himself expanded his body. So the doctor checked Krishna and said, yeah, his condition is very, very serious. <laughs> but don't worry, there is a cure. The cure is that somebody has to bring water from Jaguna with in a, in a bucket that has thousand holes in it. So Radha Maharaj said, and how can anybody bring water from Jamuna with a bucket, in a bucket that has thousand holes in it? The doctor says, yes, <clears throat> it is impossible. But if a really chaste woman carries that water bucket, then in spite of the hole, the water will stay there. <laughs> so Mother Jashoda said, okay, then let me go and get it. He said, no, no, if the mother brings the water, then the lady will not work. <laughs> it has to be some other lady other than the mother. <laughs> so, mother then said, okay, Sri Vrindavan has many chest women, so no problem. So, and all the ladies, all the gopis that were assembled there, they tried one after another. Then the doctor said, I thought Vrindava in the in Vrindava and all the ladies are very chaste. But I can see that something is wrong here. <laughs> he said, okay, let me see. So he uh, no, he said, I heard that 
There are two very chaste women in Vrindavan. Maybe you can ask them to come. So Mother Jashoda asked, who is that? Who is that? And the doctor said, Jotila and Kutila. <laughs> so now the Maharaj immediately ran to Jatila and Kutila's house and said that, look, uh, this is what has happened and we got a doctor and the doc this is what the doctor said and, <coughs> and it is uh, a chest woman who can actually carry the water on the market and the house and poles. So Jatila and Kutila became very happy to hear that. He said, yes, the doctor must be a real good doctor. <laughs> he really knows <laughs> what the truth is. So he said, don't worry, I'll just go and get it. Then Kutila said, mother, why should you go? You are old, why should you take the trouble of carrying the water from Janana? I will go and get it. <clears throat> so then Kutila picked up the bucket and walked to the river and very proudly she dipped the bucket in the water and pulled it out and as soon as she did that all the water drained out <laughs> so she tried again and again Jyotila became very upset and said you are a disgrace to our family <laughs> you rather drown yourself in Jyotila right now and he said, okay, now I will go. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought I have a loud voice. <laughs> so, then <clears throat> Jotila went and uh, tried to get the water. And this time also all the water came down. And <clears throat> the doctor said, see, this is the condition of the <laughs> So then he sat down and he said, let me give it a try, let me make some calculations. So he calculated and he said, yes, there is one person who is really chaste in Vrindavan. So everyone became very eager to know who that person is. The doctor said, Sri Radhika. The name here says that's coming up is her name is Sri Radhika. So Jyotila and Kutila started to laugh, laugh loudly, Radhika, chest. So <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> so the, the doctor said, you shut up. <laughs> Everybody saw <laughs> what material you are. <laughs> so my calculation will never go wrong. Just go and get it. So Mother Yashoda herself <clears throat> went and told Radhika, said Radhika, please come. And this is what happened. So Radharani she started to shed tears. She said, as it is, the whole of Vrindavan called me unchaste. And now it will be exposed to everyone. And Mother Jasuda said, don't worry Radhika. You are my last hope. Otherwise, Krishna will be done. And then Radhika, with a, with a heavy heart, walked to Mother Jashoda. With her head bending down in embarrassment, she picked up the bucket. She walked up to the river and dipped 